Hey guys, it's Whoop Jaggle, and today we're going to talk about Titan Movement. Everything from Titan Movement 101 for our new light friends and people that are just starting a Titan, all the way up to advanced movement, uh, like sword flying, things like that. Uh, we're going to start out here and talk about the basics, just for folks, explain how the Titan Jump works quickly. Uh, we're going to move to jump transitions, uh, like go up to the spinny jump pad puzzle and stuff here. And then we're going to transition over to the Whisper Puzzle, and we're going to get a little fancy with it. We're going to start talking about Catapult, Lion Rampant, uh, Sword Flying, and then we're going to finish it up with you know, a tutorial on what I think is one of the best standalone uh, trash mob clear exotics in the game for Tier 1, Tier 2 ads, uh, and that is Insurmountable Sculpert. And I'm going to show you some techniques I've been asked. You know, this, is, this whole video is going to be kind of a compilation of things I've been asked about. Like, how do you do that, or how do you do that? Uh, this is going to be some things around, just around movement. And this is, you know, of course, my opinion. Um, but, you know, I'm going to show you some stuff. And, and hopefully I'll change some minds if you're running. Like, I've got a, you know, a good recommendation on, you know, the jump you should be using on just a daily driver, etc. So hopefully there'll be some stuff that'll help you here. But remember, if you found the video helpful, hit that like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. And leave a comment and let me know if you had any questions, you know, if I didn't, you know, answer something or cover something that you had a question about. I'm not going to cover absolutely everything. That would be a super long video, but I think this is mostly most of the Titan movement I'm going to cover here. Um, and I'm going to show you how I do some of the stuff that I do. I've been asked a lot of questions. Um, and remember, you know, if you want to support the channel, hit that sub button. Uh, I do everything from, you know, tutorials like this, anything I think I, you know, that can be helpful that hasn't been covered a whole bunch, all the way up to, um, you know, high level challenge stuff. Uh, so check the channel out. I've got it divided, you know, in different playlists and stuff for you there. But with that, let's get started. We're going to go over for some of our newer to Titan folks, the three different jumps right now. Um, we're going to start on high lift. So high lift I've probably used high lift as far as a necessity, like I pulled it out maybe 10 times since I started D2. Not saying it's a worthless jump, and don't. And by the way, don't get offended if you use different jumps than I, you know, suggest here, but definitely listen, I'm talking to you Titan mains, because I see some of you guys that have been Titan mains for a while, I still see them making some of the mistakes that we're going to talk about here when we talk about jump transitions and stuff. I'm hopefully going to help you guys uh, and stick around too, even through this 101 stuff, if you're a Titan main, because, you know, you might pick something up that's useful. In fact, I would bet on it. So high lift is is really kind of a goofy jump to just sort of move around with. Uh, it's really just to give you an extra couple of feet. I mean, I used it most recently uh, in the video that I did for, you know, how to get a, the divinity off of any checkpoint in Garden of Salvation. And there was one jump, uh, the biggest detractor, the biggest you know, spot that'll hold you back is trying to get back up the drop down hole before the jumping puzzle. And I used it, you know, I put it on for one section that I needed, you know, an extra couple of feet on. And then I put catapult right back on. So, you know, and it's maybe it's like under 10 times that I've used it. So it's, you know, high lift's great. It's there. Uh, if you need some extra height now catapult, we're going to do a whole section on that. So I'm not going to get super into catapult right now. Um, but as far as, you know, it takes you up. Um, I'm not going to like kind of show because you kind of need to get on these jumps and feel them. It's all about how fast you double tap the, the jump button. We'll go over that in a second. But, you know, catapult's great. It definitely has its uses. Don't want to take away from it because I'm going to show you some crazy stuff today that we're going to use, especially in combination with Lion Rampant. So... We'll get into that, but one thing I'm going to show you right now as we're talking about it, it's my jump puzzle jump. So usually, um, it depends on which jump puzzle, but, you know, and this is why. Because kind of like a hunter, you can fall off the edge and catapult will literally bring you back up. So um, it's actually really good in combination with Lion Rampant where you get some extra jump. Uh, I'm going to show you some stuff later, okay? But... Because it takes you up and, you know, shortest distance between two points is a straight line. And I want some control over that. The recommendation I have for anybody that's new on Titan is definitely Straff Lift. Straff Lift for 90%. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't need the other two jumps. I could do anything that I wanted to do with Straff Lift. And as a daily driver, I 100% recommend starting out, if you're new to Titan, on Straff Lift. 
and then you can incorporate the other ones. And I'll show you how I use them. Um, and folks have had a lot of questions. Hey, how do you do that? And how do you do that? I'm not claiming that I'm like the best in the world or something, but uh, you know, I'll show you. I'll show you as the video goes on that that some of these recommendations I would take to heart and try it, especially if you struggle on jumping. So, um, yeah. So to talk about, let's talk about how the jump works here. So I'm going to double tap. So like, obviously you get in the air with a single jump, but when you tap it again, depending on how quick your cadence is, that's how high you're going to go. So I'm going to double tap super fast. We go about that high in the air. Okay. By the way, mobility affects how high you jump and how far you strap. This in, it says increases your movement speed and maximum jump height. It's exactly what it does. But movement speed has confu confused the community. Some folks still think that it increases your overall sprint speed. It does not. Your sprint speed is locked at a certain speed. Uh, that is controlled by things like lightweight weapons will make you sprint faster and dune marchers, right? Stuff like that. So dune marchers, stompies for hunter, and warlocks got transversive steps. It actually gives you faster sprinting. So those things do stack, and I've got them both on because we're going to be zipping around doing some stuff here. So just that's something to bear in mind. It's only your strap speed, your walk speed. Like, say there was a bunch of ads here, and you jumped up on this thing. Oh, my God, I'm getting baked. You know, too many ads, too many ads. It takes forever, it feels like, to back off of it. So even in PvE, it can be I'm turning around. I haven't run a whole a high mobility for most of the time, but I'm kind of turning around on that. I'm running higher mobilities and stuff just because I don't want to feel like I can't get out of something quickly um, if I'm having to back up, backpedal, or whatever. Anyway, so back to this. So we're jumping, right? So that is as high as it goes. I'm going to hit it a little bit more slowly. Tap, tap. And it went about half the height. And then I'm going to almost land before I hit that jump again, and it level floats. That level float is very important, right? So essentially what I'm saying is no matter what the Titan jump, same thing with Warlock, the faster you tap those two together, the more up you're going to go. So if I'm just walking this direction, I tap as fast as I can, I go up that high. If I sprint, I go up a little bit lower because I've got forward momentum now. So that's about all I'm going to say about that. You really need to get on and just practice that, but understand that that's the principle behind the Titan jump. Okay. Now we're going to talk about this level float action that I was just talking about. Okay. Jumping and then almost landing and hitting it again is how, is why I like, I almost said increased control. I've been playing a bunch of D1. That's what it's called in D1. Uh, that's why straff lift is so good. Uh, because you can sprint forward, almost land, hit your jump, and you're actually going a little faster than your sprint speed. You'll notice yourself catching up with your teammates and passing them doing that, right? So that's why you'll see a lot of Titans doing that instead of sprinting. You almost never see a Titan main that is worth his salt sprinting because he's doing this, right? The other thing you're going to notice me, and I don't mean worth this salt. Sometimes people just don't discover this stuff. I don't mean to sound like that, but like, I just mean, you know, like when you see a Titan main who's really good at movement and stuff, you'll see them doing that all the time. Um, so another thing that you'll notice me doing here is I'm hopping. I'm taking a single hop, right? And you notice I don't slow down because of that. If I sprinted for a little bit too long, I reset my momentum, right? I can't keep that. Also, I can't keep that sprint going as well right so i'm just doing a single hop but what i'm doing before that is i'm pressing the jump button again once the secondary jump is engaged on warlock or titan you press the jump button again and it actually cuts the jump off that is super important and i think it's something that folks struggle with who struggle with jumping there's a couple of different things that they that i see i'm struggling with the other one is going way too high and landing from on high on ledges and tippy stuff and stuff like that that, you know, kicks them off all the time. And they struggle with staying on things because they're not sort of using that level float and that hopping technique that we're talking about right here. So I'm cutting my jump off, landing, take another, you know, pressing X again, right? And just get used to doing this. Just get used to doing this, right? And then get really used to cutting your jump off. So a good way to show that off is we're going to hop these boxes real quick, right? 
We're just gonna land on them. Now, every like when I'm approaching them, we can just take a single hop on these ones. Little jet there. When I'm approaching these, right, I'm cutting my jump off like maybe right here because of the moon physics, and then it kind of lobs me down onto it. But notice I'm still using that hopping technique to carry my momentum forward. That was too far, knew it. To carry my momentum far, uh, forward, right? So that's, if we were doing a jumping puzzle or something, right? That's what I would be doing on all of the jumping puzzle steps and just flying through. People have watched me do the whisperer puzzle and they went, man, you just like fly right through that and fly over everything. Um, Cause I'm just so used to cutting my jump off, right? At the correct time. Right? But it's like tap, tap. It's, I couldn't even tell you what the button presses were there. Uh, it's a little tricky to do it like when it's short like that. I, I even stumbled up there a little bit. But so if I take off here and I do that lobbing technique or whatever, but then the next step is up here, I double tap super fast, right? And then I cut my jump off so I land on that one and then I land on that one, right? So it's really silky. It doesn't matter where the step is, you get used to how fast to tap it based on the angle and how far out you are. And that is all just a feel thing. I really can't help you any more on that. That's really a practice thing. But just know that when you're jumping, going up super high is never a good thing and landing on a little thing like this, right? You want to stay kind of level with it, a couple feet above it, and then cut your jump off in a way that just lands you right on the deal, right? Little jet, right? Boom. Now, the next thing that we're gonna incorporate, and that's kind of transitioning jumps, we're gonna do a little bit more going into that deal right there. We might be able to make it where we don't have to do the code, which would be really good, so I need to hurry up. Um, so the next thing is incorporating a shoulder charge, right? So shoulder charging is the next thing, right? that you can incorporate into your movement. Now, this is a very powerful ad clear, but it also is a really good movement technique, right? And you get to where you can, you know, you get to where you can get really good at, I mean, I can land on an antenna on the map. You know, I'm so practiced with it and stuff. And the more practice you get with it, you can do some crazy stuff. Right? You can save yourself a lot of times. You can use it for movement. It gets you out of booping um, mechanics in the game. I uh, use it in Vorgith in Shattered Throne. Uh, that bastard gets a hold of me and he splats you against the wall or whatever. I just build it up, gets a hold of me. I build it up, go with it for a second, and then turn around, boop out of it. Or I use it when I know he's starting to catch me to get out of it kind of a thing. Uh, it's really good. It's really good. You can actually see that. I love that I have uploads. It's, that's been the funnest thing about YouTube is when I'm talking to somebody about, oh, you can do this or that. Oh, you know what? I have a vid for that. So yeah, I've got some like my, you know, Titan run and stuff where I'm using that, you know, on my channel as well. If you want to go check that, I'm not going for views or anything. I don't, I don't care about it. I'm just trying to help people. But like, if you want to go see what I'm talking about, I actually have, you know, uh, solo, you know, Titan run in there. So you can go check it out. Um, but yeah. Learning to do that and build up your shoulder charge is really good. The other thing that I'm doing, you hear me revving that? You hear me revving the jump? I'm going tap, 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 right? It helps you kind of position for a good shoulder charge on an ad, right? Right? You can kind of save yourself and keep yourself level because shoulder charge needs to be relatively level. You can't, and also you can turn around and do it. Just head a direction and turn around. And I'm going to show you, you know, that's why I'm doing a Skullford because people watch me do Skullford and they don't know how to build up my shoulder charge so quick to do like second and third and whatever um, deals. And I'm going to show you how to rev that. But that revving technique is another thing to get really used to, okay? Because there's times that you have to just kind of position yourself well. Um, things like top tree hammers. Um, you know, there's a hammer strike on that and that applies melting points. So this helps you... The revving just helps you position yourself in the air at the height. And it's really, when I'm revving, I'm usually maintaining the height that I want, right? But, you know, if you're going for melting point or something, um, 
on a boss or whatever, sometimes you have to come in from the side and you just kind of learn to do this and boom, and then you can hit it. And if you get really good at that, um, that's when you're going to be really effective for your team and stuff. So cool, still open. So incorporate shoulder charge. We went over how the, you know, the mechanics work and then my recommendation for the best jump. And then the biggest thing is tra like transitioning jumps that I see strug people struggling with. Come and clear up here like this, right? And then they're trying to, oh no, I over, I overshot it, right? If that's you, then mark my words, try a uh, straff lift and don't go so high. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go in here real quick. I'm gonna show you, I mean, this part people struggle with a lot. I see people going way high up by the ceiling and it's way too high. And that was a little goofy right there, but um, you see how I stayed like low there? I stayed, you know, kind of line of sight. You just get used to that two to three feet above your thing. If you go up, I see people jumping super high up, right? Um, and they're landing on this thing and then they're getting kicked off by the moon physics. This is a great example of one of those kicky, kicky offy places. And Bungie loves to put like unlevel stuff. And there's just no reason to come from super high above it. That was even too high. I felt a little uncomfortable with the height I just had right there, to be honest. Like that's a good example. Even like four feet above it, you're starting to kind of get that landy, you know, momentum going. Right? So just want to jump, almost, almost land, and then hit your button again. Get really used to straff lip. This is a really, really good jump, right? There's just no reason to land from 15 feet above. We're going to have good control, level jumps, and just have a nice, a nice old time on some tippy platforms. You know what I mean? Okay, so we're going to go outside, and I'm going to take you up to another spot that cucks people and really shows that tipped platform, you know, moon physic boopy deal. And that is what I like to call the spinny jump pad puzzle. And that's fine. Oh, I didn't get it high enough. Ah, uh, sad. All right, so that's a good example. Dang it, I, gave, I was trying to give myself a burst there. Because you can get enough momentum where it like kicks you, kicks you up out of that deal. You're supposed to ride that, just FYI, you're supposed to ride that thing from the bottom and follow it all the way through. If you jump in the top like that, it, don't, it does what it just did. But if you give a, a jump in it and give it a little jet, um, or give it a jet of your jump. I didn't want to use too much because I needed some to get over to the ledge here, but didn't work. But anyway, it'll give you a, a kick out of that, basically. So reason we came up here is we're going to go to the spinny jump pad puzzle, okay? Go to the spinny jump pad puzzle, and we're going to... Show off the other thing, right? And get used to really play around with the shoulder charging with the, you know, setting yourself up for heights and, you know, building it up, doing the revy thing, all that stuff. Mess around with it, you know? Warlock's kind of the same thing. You see, you see I'm talking about not coming in from too high. You see a lot of Warlocks going too high and then they're jump, they kind of cut their jump off and land on it too hard. Uh, I know Warlock will float you down, but I have learned with Warlock to go up, cut your jump off, and then level float. If you fall for a couple of feet after you cut your jump off, it will level float you and not do that stupid downward float. That's the distinction. If you hit your jump button, if you cut it off and hit your jump button immediately again, you'll downward float that 30 degree angle. So that's just a tip for Warlock. Cut it off and then you'll float in. You know, you'll float right in just like on Titan here where you're only coming in from, you know, three feet above it or whatever and you get better and better at it. That's something that helped me out a lot. So this is another one that I see people go all the way up, right? Almost hitting their heads on the ceiling and then they try to land on it. And now it's tipped and they also try to, they stick to the same row 
they commit to the same row and it screws them. So what I need to do is commit to that block, right? And then I'm looking at that row though, because that's where I'm gonna land down there. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna land on this guy and then I'm gonna look at this other row right here, right? Because that is where I'm gonna land, right? Let's wait for it for good timing again. So I wanna look here and then I'm looking up at the wall, even though it seems like, oh my God, I'm not gonna make that. You totally did. You totally will because it's gonna rotate down below you by the time you get down there. If you're moving through like that, if you're going one at a time, then you kind of have to play it by ear. But this is another one, just an example of, and I just wanted to show you how to do it super smooth and just kind of rotate through there. Um, yeah, I mean, just wanted to show those couple of, of examples uh, of, you know, tipped, you know, moon physic, um, moon physic platforms that that cut people a lot and, and kick people off. And that's usually why, as you're jumping too high, you gotta learn to come in, you know, smoothly, and then you start getting better at it. And you can carry that momentum by doing that hop technique. I hope I've covered everything that I wanted to here. And definitely, you know, at any point, if you have questions about any of this stuff, hit me up in the comments. I always ask, or I always answer them hundred uh, percent, always answer them. I'll have a full conversation with you until you understand what's going on or uh, give some other recommendations or whatever. But with that, we're gonna head over uh, to the Whisper Jumping Puzzle. And I'm gonna go over some stuff. We're gonna get into the advanced stuff now. So stick around, you know, Titan Mains and folks that have, that have uh, just picked it up. You may not quite be there yet, but with a little practice, you'll be able to do some of the stuff I'm about to show you. All right, so we'll see you over there in a sec. All right, guys, so we're here in the Whisper Jumping Puzzle. Uh, we're moving on to the more advanced section of the video, um, which is where we're going to employ catapult. Now, I didn't mean to cap on catapult or make it sound like it wasn't a good jump. I'm just talking about for a daily driver, strap lift is definitely going to treat you better as far as mobility, smoothness, transitioning things, things like that. But catapult lift absolutely crushes strap lift in the situation I'm going to show you. As a matter of fact, if you haven't seen this before, you're probably gonna trip a little bit. Um, I've definitely been asked about this the most out of anything, probably. Um, Lion Rampant is, we're gonna be using you know Catapult in combination with Lion Rampant here, which gives us more jump on the Titan. Uh, it also you know gives you the ability to hip fire accurately from the air without cutting your jump off. But for right now, we're using the jump portion of it. So Catapult is best used in combination with Lion Rampant bursting in a burst fashion. If we just jump off from this ledge and we go as far as the solid secondary burst will give us, we make it next to the tree, okay? We make it about to the tree. If we burst, like I was talking about, and I'm not gonna take a single hop, I'm just gonna do a burst straight off of there. One burst, two bursts, three bursts, four bursts, and we make it over to the wall right there, which is like 50% farther or more than we made it before solid secondary bursting, okay? You'll get four bursts with Lion Rampant and Catapult, and the first two will take you up. So to illustrate this, I'm gonna do it straight up in the air like we showed on the strap lift. So I'm gonna go one, two. Now the first two take you up, second two, level float you and then that's all you get in that kind of scenario in that kind of succession uh you'll get four bursts that two will take you up so that top like 40 percent of your jump gives you an upward burst and then when you get down below maybe 50 percent whatever it will level float you like kind of like strap lift does all right in a level to level situation but one super important thing to note on titan is that its jump refreshes itself in the air if you can buy yourself enough time, unlike Warlock and Hunter. Now, Warlock and Hunter have some advantages, of course. They can stop on a dime out of terminal velocity, falling momentum, etc. But the Titan jump will actually refresh itself if you can do some tricks and buy yourself some time, which we're going to morph this uh, chasm uh, 
traversing that I'm going to do into some sword flying. We're going to show you how that buys some time as well. Um, but basically the way that it works and what we're about to do, I'm going to use this wall, I guess, right here. And let's say, so let's miniaturize this. Let's say we're looking at a Titan traversing this jump. Say this is a big gap and he's from coming from some ledge up here and it's miniaturized, right? So let's say this is 400 meters or whatever, right? So he's going to, our little Titan guy is going to burst. It's going to take him up for a little bit, right? It's gonna, he's gonna cut his jump off, but it's still gonna lob him up and forward, right? But because he doesn't have to burst again, so trajectory line, you wanna think about it, a straight line from what you're jumping from to what you're jumping to, you wanna burst around your trajectory line, right? You wanna, ha you have to burst again to keep yourself on the overall path. But because he's not going level, he's going down, he can fall farther and that gives him more time for his jump to regen before he has to burst again. Then he bursts and start, cuts his jump off and then it lobs him up and forward and then he doesn't have to burst clear till here, right? Because you can see that the trajectory lines like this. So that's the basis of why this works. And I believe that this angle out here, you could jump infinitely because of that. Because I've had to use and we'll try to get it. Let's just do that. We'll try to get it where I have to use a lot of jump to get over the platform at the bottom, okay? I'll try to illustrate what I'm talking about, like how much jump we actually have at the bottom. So normally you would go down there, right? Like normally you'd go right there. Go under the underpass and you have to jump some jumpy stuff and land on the post and then go down to the thing. And then this is the, you know, the, the chest room or whatever. Might as well grab it, I guess. But because of what I'm talking about, because we're going down at such an extreme angle, we can do this. You're welcome. Tighten, you know what I mean? So I'm bursting, cutting my jump off. Bursting, cutting my jump off. Bursting, cutting my jump off. Bursting, and I'm just gonna let it float. See how far we freaking were able to, I had almost my whole jump there. Like, what the fuck? So I had almost my whole jump. So I, I'm convinced because we're falling so far and we don't have to, we have to burst so infrequently, uh, it's able to completely top the jump off. So I tried to get low enough where I could illustrate at the bottom there. Hopefully, hopefully that illustrated it, it for you. Uh, to explain this jump right here that I just did, you take a single hop off of there uh, don't hit your jump again until you clear that lip or it will bump your head off of there and bounce you down and then you will be too low to recover. If you wait until after that, the first burst, we already know, will take us up. So I bursted, took me up, lobbed me forward, bursted again, another one took me up, and then you have two level floats to make it over to here, right? So that whole thing works because of the Titan jump refreshing itself in the air and giving us enough time. Sick. That was awkward. Shoulder charge a little bit too quickly. So we're going to go down here. Right? Um, but I'm kind of glad that happened right there so you guys can see the power of catapult like saving you in jumping puzzle situations. Um, that's exactly why catapult's really good. Now, you catapult mains, you guys that you know are watching, you're like, hey, I love catapult. Well, dude, me too. Me too. Absolutely love it. I do some crazy stuff with Catapult. I love it. But it has its places. And if you're a Catapult guy and you're whatever, and I haven't convinced you yet, give give you know Straff Lift a shot for a little bit and do you know what I was talking about on the Leviathan um, and, and try it. Just try it for a little bit. Try you know heading to your, your next jump, your, the next block or level that you're jumping to. Cut your jump off a little before it so you land on it and take a hop so you don't steal your momentum and just double tap correctly for whatever, you know, the next jump is. Just try it. Try it and tell me, you know, tell me if it if you like it better, if you want to stick with catapult or whatever in the comments. Uh, it just makes it really smooth and it makes you able to straight line it to whatever your next place is. And when you get really good with it, uh, that's where you can really traverse stuff quickly and, and efficiently. 
So here is where we get into our um, our sword flying portion of the vid. So sword flying, we're going to utilize the catapult burst method that we just showed there, right? But we're going to incorporate a sword swing after the burst. So because we already know and have established that we're trying to continue to top our jump off, uh, there's some different things that you have to do if you want to, if you're trying to gain height and gain altitude with your sword fly, you need to kind of be patient a little bit, fall just a little bit, and then, you know, sword swing and burst immediately after the sword swing, and it will take you up, right? If you've given it enough time, otherwise you'll kind of level float. Uh, but if you're just level floating, it's really easy. So here we go. So I'm just going to burst, fall a little bit, sword swing, burst. Fall a little bit, sword swing, burst, sword swing, burst, sword swing. Bursting again takes you up. You see how much height that gave us? See how I'm like gaining height right now? Because I'm bursting quickly after it. I'm also giving it enough time to regen that jump. Ooh, <laughs> we came kind of close there. But you're just going to have to practice with it. But now that you know the principles, you know what to do, right? If you're trying to get up to something, and it, it can be difficult. I mean, I'm really used to it. And I still, you know, if I'm trying to get up to something high, you know, it seems like it's difficult uh, still sometimes. But I was patient there. See what we just did? I was patient, and we gained height on every one, so I was able to gain a lot of height there. I'm glad I was able to show that. Also, I showed that you can get into the second chest from that place, too. So, yeah, that's basically it, and you can do some crazy stuff, and I think this puzzle shows that stuff that you can do off uh, better than probably anything else I could think of. And what is this dude? We got to go see. What is this dude doing? This dude was freaking out for a second out there. Oh, my God. Anyway, yeah, guys, so that is the catapult lion rampant and sword flying section. We're now going to go over to EP. Let's see if we can stun this guy. We're now going to go over to EP, uh, or escalation protocol, and we're actually going to show a tutorial on, you know, Skullfurt and how to build up your shoulder charge really well. Uh, the guy doing the tutorial, I know him. He's a pretty good guy. Yeah, listen up. He'll teach you a lot. We'll see you over there in a second. All right, guys. So we're here on Mars. Uh, two things to note before we get started. Number one, I have Mars to myself. I went into the PS4 menu, set my date back to yesterday, and then I loaded into a fast travel point. You don't have to close the game or anything. You can just fast travel, right, after you set your date back into the same waypoint if you want, and then you'll have your own instance and you're playing yesterday, everybody else is playing today, so you get your own instance. So way to get rid of blueberries and playlists and everything. Anything where there's blueberries, this will work. Uh, it works on Xbox, and I'm pretty sure if you set your date back in PC, um, it'll work as well. So uh, just a way to get, I don't use it for cheeses or anything, it's just a way to get the place to yourself. The second thing is, I've got a really good run here on a level one EP. I've done a few of them. Um, and this is the best one. Unfortunately, there was mic issues on both this intro part and the outro. <laughs> so I'm going to have to outro before that clip, and then I'll just end the video with that clip. It's only like four minutes. Just watch it. It shows a, it's a really good example of uh, defensive you know, shoulder charge, using it for movement to cut off angles and everything, and then using it to crush stuff too. I'm employing like a slide to a shoulder charge, which I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, I used a lot of stuff, and I think I called it out. It was kind of an epic ending where I slid to a shoulder charge around a box and cut the ogre's angle off uh, because it got a little froggy on me. The other runs were a little more systematic where I took care, handled the ads, stayed on top of them a little better, but I like that it got a little out of control because it showed you know, what the capabilities are here on Titan. So I want to use that still, but it's going to get a little little weird because of that. So... Uh, so, or it's it, not weird, but it's it, there's a little bit of mic interference during the thing. It's kind of a rhythmic thing, and I'm gonna have to like put it at the end of the video, which is no big deal. You guys don't care, I'm sure. So let's go over some information here real quick. Skullfort gives you your melee back on a melee kill. 
on an arc melee kill. So I'm going to get my shoulder charge, which is like the strongest melee in the game. And they're going to give it back to me constantly just for getting a kill with it. I'm in, where do I sign up? Right? So when I realized that I started u utilizing this a lot more, uh, I just think it's one of the strongest ad clear, you know, exotics in the game. Uh, I'm going to be pairing it. It also gives you your, you know, restarts your health regen immediately, which means you can take some damage and have that stopped but it's still going to give you some health for shoulder charging into groups. I don't have uh, the artifact mod on that makes it stronger. I want you guys to see the power of it here, although level one EPs are, are fairly easy, but uh, still. Um, I'm using top three striker. Um, it has double pulse nades. Uh, pulse nade is like one of the strongest nades in the game for you guys, uh, uh, new light players and stuff that don't really know Titan that well. Very, very strong. You get double pulse nades on this class. And when you shoulder charge, you get a ton of grenade energy. So not only are you crushing stuff with your with your shoulder charge, but you're getting your nades refilled constantly, so you're chucking those, right? This center tree, uh, Skullfort will work with all of these trees. The center tree is the Superman-style one-off super. Um, Thunder Crash and Ballistic Slam is the one you have to activate from the air, okay? Uh, impact conversion gives you a ton of super energy when you use ballistic slam and then skull gives you ballistic slam over and over as long as you get a kill if you do not get a kill you're going to lose it even with skull a really good example of this is my solo um, chamber of suffering which is the middle encounter and pit of, pit of heresy i did it with uh without hive barrier uh just with this super with Skullford in combination with Skullford. And it really shows the power of this of this super. Uh, you can look for it on my channel. It's you know in the challenge section. It's solo, uh, Chamber of Suffering, No Hive Mods, um, Titan Code of the Missile, something like that. Look it up, it's really good. Um, this bottom one is just the regular punchy punch, but with Skullford, you get your powered melee back on a melee kill and then you proc Frontal Assault which improve, it, it increases all damage, and then knockout, which increases melee range and damage. So you're like just punching everything to death, and Skullfort's giving you your power and melee back. Reversal gives you triggers health regeneration as well as Skullfort. And then the super is really good too. You just activate it, and then you use the shoulder charge function within the super that lasts forever, and you just individually shoulder charge everything. So it's really good. So it's just a little information if you didn't know Striker that well. All of those have really good symbiosis with insurmountable Skullford, okay? So we're gonna get to the tutorial part here, all right? I am going to, yeah, we'll just show, like it takes about this long to see the wind, which is the indicator that you have your shoulder charge up, right? It takes about that far. However, when I noticed that a secondary jump rocked the wind a little faster, I developed this, right? It's kind of, you're kind of triple tapping the button and it's allowing me to build it about 25% shorter distance, right? Where I'm essentially able to shoulder charge back to the same point with just a hop. And I'm pressing the button three times. You're gonna have to practice this. It takes some, takes some practice, right? But, what I'm doing is I'm hopping in the air and then I'm activating my second jump, secondary jump and deactivating it. I'm going click, 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 click. And I do that every time I shoulder charge. You'll see that in this video as well, okay? So that's the first thing, practice that. It's very, very good. You wanna be strategic, you'll lose your shoulder charge if you don't get a kill with it with Skullford, okay? Like you will lose it. If so, if there's a knight, you need to make sure that when you slam into him, there's a little guy that's gonna die collaterally around him. So you slam into him, boom, and then you're building it up and then you slam back into him and you know the first one took him half damage, the second one killed him, right? And the first one, you got your shoulder charge back because you killed all the little trash mobs around him, right? So you have to be a little st strategic. If there's three knights, I think you see me weaken, like I throw a nade or something to weaken him and then go into him so I don't lose my shoulder charge. So you have to be a little bit strategic. Um, and then the next thing is quickly is just the slide to a shoulder charge. It gets you underneath their shots, right? So it also increase like, like if an 
acolyte is baking you or something right here and you know it's out of shoulder charge range and you just can't quite make it but he's gonna kill you like you can duck under his shot and then shoulder charge and take him out right so i think that's pretty much it just those couple of things make you know take this elevate this exotic to a different level in my opinion because you can just you know, you get all kinds of movement and stuff out of it, and it's just so it's so powerful that being able to do it over and over in this manner is really, really effective. This is one of the main things I've been, like, asked about. I've been asked about that a lot. Like, how do you build your shoulder charge up so soon? You know, you just got done with one, and you're already, you hop away, and all of a sudden you're coming back. Crazy bastard. You know, I'm hearing that kind of stuff a lot. So I thought I would explain how I'm doing that, practice that. It's a very, very powerful move. Uh, we're going to get to the clip here. Um, I'd like to keep this video <laughs> under like 50 minutes, so that's why you, I might sound a little rushed in this part. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to outro right here, and then you can watch that clip, and we'll finish the video with that. I genuinely hope that this video has been helpful. It took me a lot of hours with these calamities, these errors. Uh, I've had high values ruining my takes and everything, too, like all the time. It was just annoying. Um... But yeah, uh, you know, swing by, hit that thumbs up, swing by, let me know if it was helpful for sure. That's That really makes my day when somebody says, hey, this really helped me get something done or, you know, I was able to do this because of you or this helped me with my... That is literally makes my day, guys. If you have any questions, definitely hit me up in the comments for sure. Um, and I really, really hope this has been helpful. Um, you know, and, you know, with that, I guess we'll just get to the clip. And I thank you for stopping by, and we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm. Now, if these guys trapped you, you can actually build shoulder charge up against the wall. So they're just screwing themselves, because all you got to do is press that as soon as you see that wind, right? And I'm always doing, I, I guess I didn't show you, but I'm doing a triple tap. So I'm getting in the air. I'm hitting my secondary jump, right? Get a slide there so those guys couldn't get me, all right? There's that situation where we left a dude up. He did that, so that sucks, all right? Getting our health back because we're, because we're slamming. Gonna do a fucking slide. Got him. Ooh, that was a little froggier than I would have liked. Let's get rid of this guy, too. Um, yeah, so I forgot to say I'm going to jet. We'll talk about it afterwards. We'll talk about it afterwards. Let me just focus here. Um, I forgot to say I, I kind of jet. I burst my secondary jump in the air and then cut it off immediately. So it's like a triple tap. I do the first one to jump, the second, the next to activate, then deactivate my secondary jump, right? Wait, did we get a worm mine cell? Ah, we didn't. Those things blow up all three of these pretty great. Watch this. <laughs> That's pretty great. Hold that. Hold the phone. Yeah, we got him. All right. So now we're just doing some more ad clear. Um, how's our time looking? We got a minute. Blow that thing up. Just help ourselves out a little bit. Go down here and get some shoulder charge action going. See? I knew that guy was going to catch that. All right. Using some sh some slide techniques here, all right? Yep, caught him. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go for it. Yeah, got him halfway. Got some small ads around that dude, right? We're able to finish those guys up because here's some small ads around this guy, so we're good, right? Anytime. Yep, there's Mr. Ogre and hey, Mr. DJ. Now, let's 
reload. We're just gonna finish this guy up. Gonna finish this guy up real quick. Gotcha! Oh my god. <laughs> that was kind of epic because I didn't see those other guys rushing me up the deal. 